Uh, good afternoon. Um, as attendee, you are listening board. Um, keep your microphone muted unless the moderator gives you the floor. Um, two important features that you can access with the button at the top of your screen is the participant window uh, to view the other attendees um, and the chat window. You can ask questions to the speakers and you can um, you can chat with uh, some of the participants directly. Um, to ask panelists a question, uh, the best is to type your question in the chat and uh, um, we will we will answer as possible. Um, the chat will be recorded. So even if your question is not answered, we can answer uh, after the session. So Vendula. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to our session. I'm Vendula Novačková, uh, the director of uh, representation of the South Moravian region to the EU, and I will be moderating uh, this session today. Uh, the session uh, communicating science, uh, hashtag engage audience. Uh, today's uh, session is focused on the popularization of science and it's organized by regional partnership, Regions for Open Science. The members of the partnerships uh, are the South Moravian region from Czech Republic, uh, who is the leading partner, Velkopolska region from Poland, uh, Murcia region from Spain, uh, region of Slavonia, uh, Barania and Sriem in uh, Croatia, the Remet Foundation in the city of uh, Carini in Sicily, Italy, and the Cyprus uh, Institute. Uh, why science communication? It's an important challenge for scientific work in the regions and the cities. It increases the attractiveness of uh, research and encourages the best scientists to conduct research and research institutions uh, within the region. And the science communication is the crucial tool. Uh, now something about today's uh, agenda. Uh, we will start with uh, our keynote speaker, who is uh, Ms. Uh, Signe Razzo. Then uh, we will continue with uh, our panel debate, where our experts from various kinds of institution uh, tell us more about the topic. And after panel debate, uh, we have uh, some time for the questions. So uh, if you have uh, any question now or during uh, our session, do not hesitate and write it into the chat and please uh, specify who are you asking. Uh, I think now we can start. So I pass the word to our keynote speaker, Ms. Signe Razzo. Uh, he, uh, she is uh, the Deputy Director General at uh, DG Research and Innovation at the uh, European Commission. Ms. Razzo, tell us uh, something about uh, how European in, uh, Union working on science communication and how European Commission support uh, the topic. Also, we will see short video, which show us a nice example of how European Commission communicates science. So, uh, Ms. Razzo, please. Uh, well, dear participants of this uh, session, uh, many thanks for inviting me uh, to the session speaking on communicating science, which is part of the EU regions week. And clearly it's important that we communicate science across Europe, across all the regions. That's why I think it's very important to have this discussion, namely as, as part of this week. Uh, now, what I'd like to uh, start with is to remind you that exactly two weeks ago, on the 30th of September, uh, the European Commission issued its communication on revitalized European research area. I can show the, the second slide. Uh, namely, it is an area uh, that will enhance communication to the wider public on science regarding the recovery, the green and digital transitions, and that will also promote participatory actions 
concerning the transformation of our economy and society. Namely, uh, science communication informs citizens about science, but it also opens up research and innovation to society. It facilitates citizens' participation in its activities and debate. What we'd really like to do, to do is to make citizens as two true co-creators of our research and innovation program. Uh, if we want solutions to the challenges uh, that we are facing today to be widely understood by the public, and uh, even support it, then we also need to build trust in them uh, by including citizens uh, in the process of development, but also through clear and effective communication. Uh, in fact, science communication is a scientific discipline. It is an activity which is conducted by career scientists, and it's also a specific career pathway followed by journalists. Uh, and actually in all these roles, uh, science communication reminds that it's in essential to convey scientific knowledge and recommendations on critical issues, which are critical to society, uh, to explain them to citizens, but also show how innovation helps to address these. Now, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, clearly, uh, during this period, um, we've seen that this has uh, highlighted the importance of science uh, communication, namely to respond to fast moving critical uh, threat to public health. Uh, we've seen that uh, these have been this, uh, the, the citizens, uh, the uh, startup companies, SMEs, who have been very much involved in providing solutions uh, for COVID-19 as a spot of um, uh, social innovation, for instance, but clearly also how our uh, program has reacted to that and also we've enhanced the communication during that, uh, that period. Now, the next slide, uh, on the next slide, you can see uh, how we support uh, uh, from framework uh, programs. Uh, also um, uh, several projects uh, to stake stock, re-examine the role and improve science communication. Uh, namely, these are the projects which are exploring the European light landscape uh, from various perspectives, uh, including mapping of training opportunities, analysis of the different groups involved, and the activities they organized, as well as the content that they produce. Just to give you a few examples, uh, for instance, the concise project uh, is providing knowledge on how citizens acquire science related knowledge in the areas of vaccines, alternative medicines, climate change and food safety. Uh, then there are in addition um, also the projects that re-examine uh, citizens information sources. We know that in an area of social media and increasing polarization of views, uh, you need to uh, develop the tools that help to navigate information and uh, identify which are the trusted sources of information because there is all kinds of information um, uh, all over the place. Uh, and uh, giving another example, the Parkas project, for example, is inviting citizens to explore and interpret scientific data for themselves. And by these means also to combat misinformation uh, because it, uh, it's necessary to give the tools uh, to the citizens to reach their own conclusions. So with all these kind of projects and consortia behind them, we are building expertise. Uh, we are also strengthening networks across uh, Europe. Uh, these are the projects which are still at an early stage uh, but they already demonstrate that citizens are uh, uh, increasingly considered central to science communication. Now, to this end, future science communication uh, will appear much less a one-way, one-off activity, but much more two-way, interactive, ongoing dialogue. And this is what is also uh, underlined uh, in our communication on European uh, research uh, area. Uh, also in our next uh, research and innovation program, Horizon Europe, what we propose to do is to uh, have further, a further 
uh, actions uh, in order to consolidate good practices, develop and pilot training and establish EU pool of expertise. Uh, now I'd uh, also like to give uh, an example of Horizon uh, Year of Missions, which will be particularly high profile and relevant. Uh, as uh, this is in, in the missions that we envisage citizens playing a role in the whole process from uh, co-design, setting visions and agendas, uh, implementation as well as co-assessment of the results. All of that requires two-way communication uh, about the missions. And I'm, I'm really now also um, uh, asking you, uh, important actors at the regional level, uh, also to promote uh, Horizon Europe missions uh, in order to uh, get the citizens involved in those. Uh, over the summer, there were several events organized in different European cities and regions uh, together with the mission boards uh, in order to involve citizens uh, in uh, the defining, formulating uh, the objectives of the, of the missions. Uh, also regions and uh, cities um, uh, uh, will have the role uh, to bring uh, further local perspectives, uh, also establish key partnerships between regions and uh, communities. Uh, so all these actions are expected to contribute to improved uh, communication. Uh, because uh, communication needs to be place-based uh, and really relate to the issues which uh, people, the citizens, uh, care about. Uh, I'd also like to um, mention uh, an initiative uh, that we are doing together uh, with, the, um, uh, with the Committee of the Regions, uh, which is called Knowledge Exchange uh, Platform, where science really meets uh, regions. And now to conclude, uh, uh, let me just, uh, there, are, there you can see the, the links to different videos. Just to save time, I'm going to show only one of them. Uh, the one uh, which uh, is um, uh, showing how we've involved uh, and informed citizens uh, and the research communities in finding solutions to fight the uh, coronavirus. But before uh, showing the video, just uh, let me conclude that science communication is essential for bringing the world of researchers and citizens together to address the societal, ecological, economic challenges that Europe is currently facing. Uh, communication, interaction and trust is now more important than ever and all regional actors have an important play to role that. And now just uh, let's see how uh, this was done uh, during, the, um, during the coronavirus uh, height. Now we can see the video. <laughs> for the key message of uh, our session. 
Uh, now I would like to pass the word to uh, Ms. Iva Shashinkova. She is the Science Communication Manager at Masaryk University in uh, Brno, Czech Republic. And uh, Ms. Shashinkova uh, thinks about the science communication. Is it a pleasure, a challenge, or a must? Let's find out with Iva. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, yes, on a daily basis, I am dealing with this very interesting yet complex question, whether science communication is a pleasure, a challenge, or a must. Next slide, please. Our multidisciplinary university is taking advantage of opportunities offered by dynamic and progressive South Moravian region an innovation hub providing great conditions for developing scientific knowledge and technology transfer. Science communication is therefore a hot topic in our region. Next slide, please. Over the last year, I have found out that there are very many individuals at various institutions across Europe asking this particular question. What actually is this science communication? Is it something we want to perform? Is it something scientists should do? Would it bring any benefit to me or to my institution? Next slide, please. In my perception, science communication is a bridge between the organized knowledge created within a university or a research institution and the rest of the world. In different words, it is a set of complex activities leading to the spread of general awareness of science and research. Still, somebody may ask if such a bridge is actually needed. When we go to the next slide, I will provide you with a justification why I believe it is needed very much, both from the public research and a university perspective. Because science communication is a key tool to promote your science and to increase your impact. Science communication is critical to disseminate knowledge, to cultivate society, to strengthen public critical thinking. Science communication helps to motivate potential young scientists for their future engagement in the world of science. Science communication also supports creating an interesting brand for cooperation within international grant schemes and consortia. Science communication is a key tool to present your university as the best place for a scientific career. It also helps to improve the credit of European science, I believe. And it might help even to influence decision-making processes in research and development. We could definitely continue in listing further reasons why science communication is a very important tool and activity for us, because I believe there are as many reasons as there are researchers. However, there is a problem. Science communication is often being neglected or misused for a different purpose. Therefore, we try very hard to bring attention to science communication, to make it a topic of interest and a topic of discussion. And last but not least, to put it into practice and to improve it. In this context, I would like to share with you one story. Once there was an upset and lonely university that had no say in public affairs. Day after day, it concentrated on following its own standard routines, unaware 
of what great knowledge had been created inside its own laboratories. That is until one day when open-minded university administrators decided to fight against the old way of running the school and put great effort into opening the university's doors to the public. They started talking about science communication everywhere, every day, to everyone. As a result, many new channels for communicating news from the university opened to them. Subsequently, Masaryk University made a name for itself and lots of students and researchers from abroad wanted to study and work there. Since then, the university has been a transparent environment where sharing information about science and raising public awareness about science are essential parts of everyday life. Next slide, please. When you communicate science, please be aware that each target audience requires different key message and a different communication medium. The current trend represents a shift from traditional one-way communication like publishing in media towards active participation and engaging your audience. Next slide, please. And there are many, many different methods and forms of how to communicate science and how to engage audience at the same time, like uh, science cafes, science festivals, social media interaction, and many others. And these methods could actually bring a pleasure, not only to the audience, but also to the communicator. Therefore, I conclude this presentation expressing my strong belief that science communication is not only a challenge, a must, but it is also a pleasure for all stakeholders. At the last slide, I will only thank you for your attention and uh, I am keen on uh, having a subsequent debate and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Chashinkova. And uh, uh, now uh, the next uh, member of uh, our panel debate, uh, Mr. Piotr Rzymski, the researcher and lecturer at uh, Poznan University in Poland. Dr. Rzymski, uh, tell us about science communication during the COVID-19 crisis, which is unfortunately still actual topic. Uh, you will also learn something about how combat the COVID-19 fake, uh, fake news. Uh, Mr. Rzymski, please uh, take your floor. Thank you very much. Good at afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will briefly share my own experience during the COVID-19 crisis as a researcher and lecturer at Poznan University of Medical Sciences which is the largest medical academic unit in the region of Greater Poland that I represent today. So obviously as a medical university, we had and we still have our own responsibilities during the pandemic. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, to give you a glimpse of examples. Uh, yes, yes. Th that one, okay. And uh, to give you a glimpse of examples how we engaged, uh, we established a lab that supported the national diagnostic system with over uh, 100,000 samples analyzed in the first six months of the pandemic in Poland. We have set up our drive-through collection point. We also established a lab testing for antibodies. Uh, and we've sent over 1,200 of our students as volunteers to support different healthcare units during the pandemic. Next slide, please. But of course, we also had to engage in communication of science as it is a key future to ensure accurate responses to a health threat and public understanding of its nature, especially uh, because a public is uh, an important part of, uh, of this response. Next slide, please. 
And uh, it was clear for us that even before uh, the first case of COVID-19 was identified in Poland, the epidemiological situation was already causing high public anxiety and panic in our country and also resulting in some adverse behaviors such as prejudice, discrimination, xenophobia directed toward individ individuals of Asian descent. And we acknowledge this problem publicly, as you can see here, my, my peak and uh, comment uh, 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 in Nature Journal as an example. Next slide, please. Uh, we also investigated these behaviors and documented them in an honest way through an open access peer reviewed journals. Next, please. Eventually, we have published a letter in Science Journal, a call to action to academia around the globe to engage in activities preventing COVID-19 related prejudice toward Asian students and workers. In response, different universities all the way from Poland uh, up to New Zealand have implemented their own preventive programs. So there was a beautiful response to this call. Next slide, please. Uh, the COVID-19 uh, received a tremendous scientific response, and as you can see here on our graphs, with over 2,000 peer-reviewed articles and over 1,000 preprints published within just the first three months since an outbreak. But this massive research output was, and still often is, challenging to journalists to, to choose what is essential and to assess the evidence critically. So we researchers uh, use different approaches aiming to ensure that science is communicated accurately to the public. Next, please. Uh, firstly, we have published a number of videos on epidemiology, clinical aspects of COVID-19, and also what is known on, on coronavirus in general, what is a myth, what is a fact. And within a few weeks, these videos received a relatively high number of views exceeding those received by the YouTube videos posted by the Polish Ministry of Science and Higher Education. And please notice that the highest number of views was received by a video with a researcher, that was me. But this clearly shows that scientists and science are highly demanded during the crisis. Next, please. Um, to help media in the communication of accurate, uh, well-balanced messages on COVID-19, I also engage in cooperation with one of the largest weekly magazine in Poland, Politica, and published nearly 50 articles on COVID-19, deconstructing myths, uh, counteracting circulating fake news, or simply informing the public on the progress of coronavirus research. And these articles had received so far several millions of views. Next, please. Um, I also never refused any media uh, a comment, longer or shorter, or a question and answer session, uh, session on COVID-19, despite that I like some outlets more, some less, and some I just don't like. But the COVID-19 is a problem for all of us, regardless of our worldview. So in total, uh, I, I gave nearly 100 of these comments. Next, please. Um, I also cooperate with Polish press agency, which set up an app called Fake Hunter, in which users can submit any information on COVID-19 they have found and wish us to critically assess based on evidence and give a public verdict, whether it's true or a myth, and I, I think it's a, a great uh, tool. Next, please. Um, as an editor and reviewer of scientific journals, I have performed over 100 reviews of manuscripts related to COVID-19 and observed with my colleagues, a flood of poor science or even attempts to publish and popularize uh, pseudoscience in, uh, through peer review journals during the crisis. Next, please. Concerned about this, uh, we have published a call to get an editorial and reviewer practices back on rigorous track and not to rush the peer review against the clock, as only high quality peer review can ensure that clinical trials on medicines and vaccines under the development are conducted and reported in an accurate manner for decisive processes. Next, please. Um, so uh, to conclude, uh, there are lessons to learn from COVID-19, and one of them is to understand that science is critical in a time of crisis by providing essential information on its nature and mitigation strategies. In fact, scientists have predicted the pandemic, but nobody seemed to take notice whether anyone will care what science has to say about the impending climate crisis is still, unfortunately, an open question. Uh, nevertheless, during the crisis, the researchers must communicate science to the public. 
And um, it, it, it's simply, in my opinion, they do to you an extra job, something they're made for, prepared for, have skills for, even though it's often a stressful, time-consuming and challenging task. And to ensure that the broadest possible audience is reached, all uh, channels of communication must be used. Personal preferences should not be taken into account when we deal with a problem that affects everyone, regardless of worldview, political opinions or religious beliefs. And uh, my final conclusion is here that public must understand the role of science uh, in the modern world. Simply put, without science, we would have a much worse situation right now with no uh, good prospects. And uh, in my last slide, I would like just to thank you very much for attention. I will be happy to answer uh, any questions if there are any later in the session. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Zimski. Uh, now, uh, another speaker, uh, Ms. Encarnagian Navarro, uh, Head of uh, Medical uh, Genetics, Chief Researcher and Professor, Hospital Clinico Universa Re Universitario Virgen de la Arisaca, I'm sorry, <laughs> and Murcia Bio Biomedical Research Institute, Arisaca, uh, University of Murcia in Spain. Uh, can we work with the science as with the story? I'm sure uh, Mrs. Navarro can persuade us. Uh, we will also find out some good practices from the region of um, Murcia in Spain. And Ms. Navarro uh, tell us more information about the building the European project from uh, the region of uh, Murcia. Uh, take your floor, Ms. Navarro. Ms. Navarro, I couldn't see you. It's okay now. Ah, thank now. you. Now? Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everybody, and it's an honor for me to participate on this table. Uh, representing the region of Murcia, also the, the Murcian Institute of Biosanitary Research and my colleagues, and also all the people dedicated to disseminate science in, in the region. It's uh, also a pleasure to, to share all the experience uh, from all of you. And uh, I am going to speak about the science as uh, storytelling, uh, communicating research and development and building the Europe project from the region of Spain, of Murcia. Um, next, please. Why communicate science? Why scientists should communicate science? What does open science mean? It's a very important question. How are science and society connected? How can we build an effective cooperation between science and society? One of the goal of Horizon Jury Europe is fostering open science and ensuring visibility to the public and open access to scientific publication and research data. Next, please. Science is uh, following the, the UNESCO definition is the greatest collective endeavor, contribute to ensuring a longer and healthier life, help us to provide water for our basic needs, it nourish our spirit, Science generates solutions for everyday life and helps us to answer the great mysteries of the universe. In other words, science is one of the most important channels of knowledge. Next, please. But uh, uh, science must respond to societal needs and global challenges, public understanding, and engagement with science and citizen participation, including through the popularization of science are essential to equip citizens to make informed personal and professional choices. Government need to make decisions based on quality scientific information. Governments and citizens alike must understand the language of science and must become scientifically literate. Scientists 
must understand the problems policymakers face and endeavor to make the results of their research relevant and comprehensible to society. Next, please. So, science communication is an important challenge for scientific work in the regions. It's a crucial tool to boost internalization. People understanding of science is crucial in today's high-tech society as it has an impact on our health, the environment and the economy. But how well is the science of such issues communicated around Europe? Next. I am going to explain some of the practices in our region, beginning with the uh, research in the Murcian Institute of Biosanitary Research where I work in rare diseases and genetic area with almost another thousand of other researchers working in different areas in 300 different projects. And when the uh, COVID uh, pandemic uh, comes, we face this challenge and rapidly and very fast we transform to other uh, uh, project to work in another project trying to fight uh, again the virus, the coronavirus. And now we are working in 20 different projects related to uh, coronavirus, to COVID-19. One of them is a Stop Coronavirus. Um, uh, this project I lead in the region, uh, together with other hospital in, in other cities in, in Spain, in Madrid. And uh, we try to face all the uh, question about clinical, immunological, genomic, and also ethical question about uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. This is uh, a very nice experience because we are uh, constantly communicating uh, with uh, the society all our projects and also citizens are helping us to uh, achieve all the goals, even uh, supplementing the financial support from the public system. Next, please. Also, there are other uh, good practices uh, uh, that uh, try to uh, get the citizens, uh, the citizen engagement uh, bridging the gap between science and society, uh, getting networking. One of, of example is uh, Europe Direct Region of Murcia office that uh, help us to connect with the public, telling simple but engaging stories about complex new uh, research, helping us to fight against misinformation because this is very important, as uh, the, the the colleague have said uh, before. Fake science is fatal and this uh, is something very important to fight. Importance also of social media to communicate research and innovation using other tools than we previously have done. Next please, yes. So there are also many, many other initiatives, not only from the public uh, uh, part, also from uh, private initiatives. And uh, I'm going to explain some of them in the region of Murcia. For example, the European Research Night uh, Marie Curie Action is a, is a European uh, funding event to promote research and bring the researcher closer to the public. But, uh, but also we have a very uh, nice and impacting association, Association of Scientific Dissemination of Region of Murcia, established established by scientists and also journalists to share the scientific progress with the society and motivate young people to embark on research career. Next, please. Uh, we have the annual Science and Technology Week by the Seneca Foundation Science and Technology Agency of the region of Murcia. Also, there are a very impacting dialogue with science from the regional library with scientific from different area with Pedro Quilez and Dani Torregrosa. We have hospital classroom with a cycle of science 
therapy from the regional ministry of education led by by the group of hospital teacher and also by Meli Toral, and the first plan for scientific dissemination from our public university by uh, Dr. Lopez Nicolat as vice chancellor of sciences, science dissemination. Next, please. So the, my final uh, message is after this brief uh, description of some of the uh, initiative in my region. I'm very sorry because I cannot uh, speak about all of all of them. But my final messages are that effective communication uh, brings us better science. When scientists communicate more effectively, science thrives. So let's build a union of vitality based on our work in a science. We will be stronger together. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And we'll be open to any question from all of you. Thank you so much. And uh, now uh, we will be dreaming a little bit, dreaming about the science, of course. Uh, Ms. Drvenka, Drvenka, tell us about the journey from dreams to reality within the science communication. Uh, Ms. Natasha Drvenka, Association Professor at the Strasmayer University of Osijek, Croatia, uh, please tell us more. Uh, dear partners and all the guests, I'm glad to be with you today um, and uh, to try present some uh, development issues about my regions of Slavonia, Varanja and Srem. Please, next slide. So uh, communication uh, of science is not so problematical in our region, but uh, I think that we must be aware of some challenges. So next slide, uh, next slide, please. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, uh, region of Slavonia, Baranya uh, and Sriem include five counties uh, in this uh, area of Croatia. This is a continental side of Croatia. So uh, since it, its uh, independence in 1991, Croatia underwent a period of institutional and uh, economical transformation, especially with accession to the European Union which opens so many new opportunities uh, for new development. But for the beginning, uh, we must say that we have different policy approaches for device uh, uh, institutions. So they are mostly regional uh, oriented universities and not so much research intensive and international, interna international oriented yet. So, uh, I think that you know uh, one note uh, which says that the risk is uh, that enthusiasm is a fuel that burns fast. So I think that uh, we must uh, spread excellences like uh, you mentioned before. Um, so uh, uh, the chain breaks uh, on the weakness uh, link, we could say. So here resources of regional innovation are based on connecting the companies uh, improving public uh, private um, um, communication collaboration cooperation and of course uh, transformation of um, some uh, uh, um, traditional institutional framework we could say next slide unfortunately uh, the homemade uh, homemade uh, uh, war for independence in Croatia damaged not only human lives and uh, basic infrastructure and destroyed many uh, industries and um, uh, agriculture uh, um, uh, institutions, uh, but also slow transformation uh, capability of uh, many institutions and make some negative uh, impact on the, we could say, mindsets. You uh, see here also problems uh, uh, with uh, uh, le uh, regions uh, lagging behind, uh, lagging behind with um, X uh, inefficiency. So, um, unfortunately, moreover, our region uh, have a gap of uh, approximately more than 2,000 uh, euro GDP per capita, uh, and uh, we could say that uh, almost 25% of uh, 
natural uh, or negative uh, population rate is uh, from our region in Croatia. So this is really a big problem for our region. And also lack of businesses with uh, growth potential. Um, only uh, 4%, we could say, small businesses or small uh, um, Croatian firms cooperated with universities universities uh, versus uh, 31% of large ones. So we have, unfortunately, low uh, participation level in the European Union research programs. But uh, please, next slide. But uh, nowadays, uh, uh, we also have problems with uh, uh, slowly transformation of university. Um, especially known like a problem publishing just to publish and not publishing uh, as uh, uh, um, uh, as a result of uh, really good cooperation with businesses to solve some really uh, uh, important problems in our area or uh, in any field of science. Uh, if we say uh, that we have problems with um, international internationalization and uh, so on, we also have problems with Erasmus Plus because uh, this continental side, uh, side of Croatia um, is uh, not so attractive like seaside of Croatia. So um, uh, we have really good uh, competitors. Uh, to attract Erasmus Plus students, uh, and we really must uh, change our uh, curr curriculum uh, and be more flexible uh, uh, for internationalization uh, and more open for uh, new opportunities. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, but we could see here in nowadays uh, that our five counties increase. Uh, uh, not only uh, average of uh, European Union fund absor absorption capacity, uh, but also uh, uh, we could say that uh, we increase our exports uh, and we have uh, about 2,000 euro more uh, than Croatian average in the European fund absor absorption. So uh, we could uh, uh, really uh, now be satisfied because uh, something is uh, changing, something is improving. So our uh, region is really uh, uh, in the, uh, in some way of transforming uh, their regional or uh, local infrastructure and also economic structure. So um, we also increase STEAM graduates, improve uh, some uh, learning outcomes, but um, still, please next slide, we have some challenges with, uh, like I said before, uh, internationalization, cooperation, collaboration, uh, and improvement, uh, which is really important, culture of learning. So uh, I think uh, besides these uh, problems, like you said before, what are dreams and what is uh, the reality, I think that we must be aware of uh, reality, and then we could go uh, in safe in our future. So uh, I think that radical modernization is really necessary uh, in all domain uh, from the university level, but uh, also uh, in the level of all uh, main stakeholders uh, in region. And uh, I think that a uh, really good way is uh, to uh, uh, create a mindset that uh, is oriented uh, on the principle of the European concept the concept of propulsive and self-sustainable territorial development. And uh, as you early said, uh, the new European research area is really a good way to go. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And uh, if you have some questions, I will be glad to answer you later. Thank you, uh, Mr. Venkar. Uh, now, uh, another panelist, uh, Ms. Domata Sandri. Communication and Marketing Officer at the Rimet Foundation in the city of Carini, Italy. Uh, when we are talking about the science, we don't have to talk just about the public sector, of course. Uh, Rimet Foundation is a public-private international partnership. And more about this partnership and uh, the public engagement, tell us uh, Ms. Sandri. 
Thank you for your nice introduction and good afternoon to everyone. So we are going to see together now how our research center can bring and sustain a deep change on a territory. Uh, next, please. Okay, the Raymond Foundation, as you said before, is a public private uh, international partnership established uh, between Italian government, uh, the region of Sicily, the Italian National uh, Research Council, and two international partners, such as the University of Pittsburgh and the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. It's an integrated health system present in three continents. So our missions are to develop biomedical translational research programs, uh, training and mentoring new talents, disseminate uh, scientific knowledge, and generate a positive social economic impact in the old South Italy. Uh, next, please. A quick view uh, overview on women research, uh, it's focus on therapeutic needs, uh, and in particular organ uh, dysfunction, infectious disease, oncology, aging, diseases and neuroscience and our research program aims to find solutions mean drugs or medical devices uh, for those diseases through different approaches uh, bioengineering regenerative medicine drug discovery and vaccine development next please for the success of our research programs uh, it's important to develop a stronger network of scientific collaboration Today we have about 50 ongoing and they are strategic to integrate complementary skills, but also to increase the critical mass and to achieve a significant results for our scientific project. Next, please. Other decisive factor is of course the training and in particular high qualified training important for the success of our scientific project, but also for to develop the, the whole territory. So we work in collaboration with Sicilian universities for PhD and fellowship, and also with our international partners. Since 2006, we recruit outstanding young researchers for postdoc fellowship at the University of Pittsburgh, for example. Next, please. So for you can say now, uh, we can say that we are able to attract in Sicily high qualified professionals. All those people that you see are coming from a recognized institute from all over the world, but they decide to choose RIMED. So therefore they decide to choose Sicily for their careers. And that's really uh, important for us. Next, please. One of the reasons of the choice is uh, of course, the RIMED Biomedical Research and Biotechnology Center, which is currently under construction and will be ready in two years. It's a huge research center with an important investment made by the Italian government, and it will, be, it will give occupancy opportunity to about 600 people. So we are building our center in Carini. It's a, a small village next to the international airport and next to the metropolitan city of Palermo. And there, in the same place, next to the remote center, will be built the new ISMET hospital. ISMET is our clinical partner and it's a, a transplant center of excellence. So we can say, we can imagine that with these two institutes together and also UPMC will manage them, we can say that Carini will host a Mediterranean hub for healthcare and research with a huge impact on the territory. Next, please. So the creation of this hub allows to cover the whole circle of the research, starting from patients, understanding the therapeutic needs, so we can work to find solutions through basic and preclinical research until clinical trials and finally arrive again to the patients with solutions. Next, please. Search of scientific uh, hub would also have an uh, important and positive social economic impact on the territory because it can offer training and job opportunities, generate intellectual properties, and contribute to create startup and business opportunities but also attract public and private funding for scientific research. So doing this, we can say that this 
loop can also qualify an undeveloped area, such as Carini. Next, please. Okay, and here we are, the territory of Carini. Mm, Carini is beautiful, has beautiful historic and naturalistic heritage, but this heritage were not enough to sustain an economic development. In fact, Carini's territory was identified by the last pond security analysis as a less developed area. Next, please. A great opportunity for Carini is that it, be it has been included in the special economic zone of Sicily, also thanks to the Women's Center building. So this uh, special economic zone allows the municipality of Carini to assess funding to improve the infrastructures, for example, new streets, new railway stops, new post and bank offices, cycle path, etc., etc. These infrastructures are necessary to host uh, um, our future research center, but at the same time, of course, they will be an achievement and a benefit for all citizens. Next, please. So, and this is the key. The presence of a recognized scientific hub in a less developed region is a factor of high economic and social change. And and it can even become the distinctive factor of the territory. And that's why it's so important to involve the citizen in this change. It must be not perceived as a change imposed from above, but as a shared change. Next, please. And that's why we are already working on a public engagement program. Uh, we want to create uh, interest and curiosity for the science. And so this program will include uh, collaboration with schools, of course, for example, workshop in the local schools, but also guided visits of student groups in our laboratories and uh, many different pi public events uh, necessary to disseminate a scientific culture in the whole territory. For example, we are working at the creation of a living lab for virtual reality experience on scientific topics. We are working uh, for, to organize a film reviews, again, on scientific topics. Uh, we already made uh, our, our science exhibition, so uh, scientific imaging with uh, art appeal, like for example, this is like, the title is uh, The Planet of the Petit Prince, but in reality it's a protein. <laughs> and so you can see behind me other example of this. Open us and lectures, and so many other events that we uh, want to, to offer to, the, to Palermo, to Carini, and to the old citizen. So in this way, Mm, thanks to occupancy and training uh, opportunities, thanks to the great work of public engagement that you want to do, we really hope we can contribute to a positive change uh, for the territory of Carini, but also for all Sicily. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Sandri. And uh, our last speaker, but de definitely the least, uh, Mr. Fabio Maria Montanino, uh, Head of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the Cyprus Institute. Uh, how can be open science helpful? Uh, Mr. Montanino has an answer. Please. Oh, hopefully I have an answer. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. I'm coming from Palermo, so I had just, uh, you know, a view of my, of my city uh, from, from the speech uh, of, of Donata. So just, uh, you know, my, my pleasure to see my, my see. Um, so um, please, the next one. Uh, yes, I, I'll try to spot on the complexity uh, world. Uh, most of um, uh, the other panelists uh, have been uh, mentioning complexity as the, let's say, characteristic word of, of, this, uh, of, this, of these times. And uh, uh, I've heard many suggestions about the way science can help us to find a way in this, uh, in this very 
complicated period we are we are crossing that probably is going to last uh, for a while some of some 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 of us are calling it a new era uh, we can move to the next one um, yeah covid has been everywhere uh, today in the in the discussion uh, is it something not usual in the sense that it is the first way that we are going to face a global shock after the second world war that is affecting all the sectors at the same time, probably as a global war. Uh, 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 I mean, we are lucky. I mean, that the number of uh, of deaths are uh, quite less than than in a, in, a, in a war. But the situation is bringing us to rethink any sector, any way we are uh, producing. We are staying together. We are spending our time. It's changing our lives, and it seems we have not uh, any solution that can be brought in, in this new era from the past. Uh, how can we um, uh, face this change that is like a preparation of, to the big wave, that is the next one, uh, that is the uh, climate uh, crisis? Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's coming. Uh, it, we don't know the impact, uh, the real impact uh, this will have in our lives. So we are facing a smaller crisis probably. We don't know how much time it will take to come in. Uh, I was uh, talking about uh, communicational science. I saw uh, the communication after the polar stern, the German uh, ship, uh, came back from the Arctic uh, uh, crusade. And they are bringing data that are showing us probably this will make our models more and more precise in the, in the next uh, few years, that the shift to a new climate, uh, climatic environment is going to speed up. So it's the first time that complexity, so the way everything is interconnected and humans are going back to be part and to feel part of a broader environment that they cannot control uh, is going to be uh, in uh, a priority. Understanding complexity is going to be a priority in our lives, not only for scientists, but in the daily life. So we, we have to bring the attitude to understand complexity and to feel complexity in the daily life. So in, let's say, in the schools, in the companies, in the uh, public sector, in the management of cities, in the management of regions. And we are not ready for that. From, we, we can start from science. Um, many scientific uh, organizations are, let's say, nurturing complexity. They are studying reactions and, uh, and chains uh, where complexity is, uh, plays a significant uh, role. But this is not coming out from the, from the research and is got, not going to the society yet. Uh, we can go to the next one. On top of this, for the first time, probably for this reason, we have a clear fight or let's say we a clear asymmetry between science and what science is producing and the direction that is suggested by by facts and politics and this is the first really first time that for example science uh, one of the most uh, prestigious uh, uh, journals in the world the first the first time they are directly dealing with high level politics in a sense that they show that there is something that is not working in the way that science is considered by the political uh, uh, world. That's uh, something new. Uh, it's something relevant because it's the first time that scientists are looking for a direct connection with society in order to overcome uh, this issue, to try to have a direct dialogue with citizens uh, and to give information for the citizens, for the companies to have fact-based, science-driven uh, approach to this, uh, to this complex world. We can move to the next one. 
I think that open science could be the right approach to handle complexity and to face this limitation in, uh, let's say, bringing politics to consider fact-based strategies in the time and with the speed we need. We need to go faster. Uh, of course, COVID has been asking us to be very fast, but COVID, it's like a minor crisis in front of the very complex crisis uh, that's coming up from the from the planetary boundaries and, and the climate shock. So open science with all the components of open science, so from the uh, data generation by citizens to open innovation models, to the engagement of, um, uh, to the openness of data and the accessibility of data by citizens and companies, to the openness of infrastructures and uh, even to have open source and open hardware from uh, scientific and innovation projects is a way to prepare a society to find collective solutions to complex, complex and collective problems. What I call crowdfunding, that's not, it's also crowdfunding, but it's a research driven by this uh, collaboration where all the people both in the science side and uh, in the society side, they are cooperating to find uh, solutions. This will also support a new wave of companies. This is my main job is to create innovation and to bring uh, research uh, results and lab results into, into the society through uh, the open innovation process. Uh, this will help also to have a new generation of, uh, of, uh, of companies that can create a new, new and more resilient and sustainable econom uh, economy. We can move to the next one. I will bring you a couple of examples that we are um, bringing uh, forward in the Institute. The in the, our Institute is a multidisciplinary uh, environment. We are um, all involved in, uh, let's say, sustainable development models, uh, tackling this issue from different uh, perspectives. And uh, the culture embedded in the Institute is a culture of open science and open innovation. So starting from uh, the uh, concrete application in our environment of the open, uh, um, uh, the, the European initiative for open science uh, that has been brought through a regional project, uh, the NI4OS in, uh, in this area involving all the Balkans and uh, and uh, Cyprus and uh, part of the Caucasus uh, region. Uh, so we are training our researchers to open science, to create open access to data, to uh, build and manage open data infrastructures and uh, uh, to share results uh, with the community, with a fair approach. So the specific uh, uh, European approach to openness. We can move to the next one. On the other side, so more on the education of citizens uh, in, in Cyprus, uh, we are uh, implementing as well the model of science uh, fair. And the Institute is, is very is deeply in, in engaged in this uh, with a main focus on uh, sustainability and understanding where the planet is going and how we can understand uh, what the future is preparing for us and uh, how we can face it. And this is quite important to introduce the, this kind of uh, deep awareness uh, from the very early stage of schools. It's a cultural shift, what we need. And uh, uh, this kind of open, open science initiatives uh, can help us uh, quite a lot. Next one. That's a flagship initiative in open innovation. Uh, the grant agreement uh, probably has been signed today. Uh, it's a strategic project um, financed by the ANI CBC Med program, so the Mediterranean uh, um, uh, branch of the Neighborhood Initiative for the, of the European Union. Uh, it's a very large project uh, uh, regarding the, 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 we are scouting answers 
to the challenges coming from the sustainable development goals through an open innovation process for the Euro Mediterranean area uh, with a focus on the East, uh, East Mediterranean uh, uh, hotspot. And uh, um, we will build a library of uh, innovation involving uh, innovators from research and from the society and from the, uh, pri uh, the private sector. And the last one uh, I want to spot on uh, is the consolidation of our high performance computing uh, infrastructure that has been built uh, within a number of uh, national and European initiatives as a national HPC competence center uh, that has been recognized uh, about one month ago as the facility for the country, for, uh, for Cyprus. It's part of the Euro HPC uh, initiative. So it's part of uh, this idea that we have to bring high performance computing into the uh, uh, civil uh, society and the economic society challenges. Uh, it's the largest open access infrastructure in the area. Uh, it, it's accessible by both the scientific and the business community. As you can see, we have already involved uh, six countries uh, with 135 projects uh, until today. And these projects are spanning in a very large uh, number of topics. But let's say that again, they are very connected to the sustainable development uh, perspective. So again, it's a loop. We are communicating the uh, accessibility to this infrastructure. We are scouting ideas. We are implementing ideas in these platforms. And then we want to send back and, and, and give back to the society uh, a result. So this is our way, I think, as a scientific uh, institution to contribute to this uh, uh, very new uh, area. Now we have a number of projects, of course, on, on COVID. Uh, but again, COVID is like a training uh, field for uh, whatever is going to, uh, we are going to face in the in these uh, next decades. So thank you again for inviting me. Uh, it has been a pleasure just to show you what we are doing. But more, more than that, to stress that we are hotspots for helping the world to change, Europe and the world to change and be prepared to, to our times. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Montagnino. And uh, now I would like to uh, thank all the panelists, all the speakers, and of course, uh, also um, to our keynote speaker. And uh, now uh, there is a time for uh, the questions. Uh, we have uh, some question in the Zoom chat. Uh, I will uh, read uh, the questions and uh, the speakers. Uh, uh, if you would like to answer, you can just uh, raise uh, the hand and uh, start to uh, answer the question. Uh, the first one is from uh, Jiří from Brno, Czech Republic. Uh, you have mentioned a lot, also a connection to public sector. Uh, what is the point of view of the panelists towards uh, the topic of city science and city science initiative of European Commission, JRC? So who would like to start? I can comment. I mean, I, I think that in, in uh, Europe uh, we are really advanced in terms of uh, of uh, implementation of multiple LIDIX uh, models. Uh, we are really leading, let's say, this process. So what I see is that from the initiative of the GRC, but also in the upcoming uh, Horizon uh, Europe program. Uh, this dimension of interaction of uh, public, private research and citizens is very, very well uh, stressed. Uh, so our, let's say, challenge now is to try to implement this in, uh, in real processes and make this uh, edX uh, work. So very, very welcome the, the initiative that is uh, keeping us at the forefront, let's say, at the, at the global level. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other answers from our panelists or also the keynote speaker? 
Uh, okay, uh, I have also another question. Um, could you give us the specific examples of how is science communicated at your organization? Who would like to start? Um, if it was not uh, targeted uh, directly at someone who should answer, I can start as I was the first one. Um, the key step, I believe, is to target the relevant audience, what we also try to do at Masaryk University. Uh, so depending on the audience, uh, we also diverse uh, the channels. For PhD students, we organize workshop on science communication, explaining the importance of this uh, agenda and uh, scientific discipline. And also uh, we give them practical hints how to do it uh, with minimum effort. Uh, at the same time, we of course support them in uh, communicating their um, their own research and research outputs. Uh, for pro researchers and professionals involved in research and development, uh, we organize high profile events like uh, Mune seminar series or Mendel lectures. Uh, while we invite Nobelists and other globally recognized uh, researchers or scientists, and uh, they come to the Masaryk University, they speak about their research and current trends in their field. Uh, there is always a debate included and uh, uh, opportunity for a personal meeting with the scientists, which is really um, very precious and highly evaluated, uh, not only by the PhD students, but also by all uh, stakeholders who are involved because it is a great opportunity to meet someone who is uh, your model or um, someone um, you really appreciate a lot in your career. Uh, for grant applicants and uh, research administrators, we organize uh, other tailor-made events like Grants Week, uh, explaining um, different uh, or presenting different schemes uh, for um, project funding and applying for um, different uh, funds from the national or international grant schemes. Uh, then we have grant providers who are also very important uh, receivers of uh, science communication. Uh, we have uh, specific conferences, like for instance, Science for Society, uh, emphasizing the university role during uh, crisis. Uh, there is also a public interested in science. So uh, for those who are interested in what is happening uh, inside our laboratories, there are events like uh, science cafes or Tea with the researcher, uh, university participate in different science festivals. Um, we prepare documentary movies. So the activities really uh, are varied. And of course, for all mentioned target groups, uh, there are media and social media interaction. Uh, the Twitter account, Muni Science, LinkedIn is used. So um, so that's, that's for the Masaryk University and how we uh, communicate science um, in uh, reality. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eva. Uh, anyone else would like to answer this, this question or can we move on? Okay. Uh, the next question, uh, how effective do panelists find science communication via social media? How difficult it is to communicate science to grammar school pupils? I will be happy to answer this question, if I may. 
Um, I think that science must be communicated uh, through social media and uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is just uh, another argument for this. Uh, it is because um, social media are, uh, are actually uh, the source of uh, circulating uh, fake news, misinformation, unsupported claims because they are amplified by uh, algorithms of these uh, social media, such as Facebook and others. And so we need to engage to communicate science and uh, science-based uh, information through also these channels to counteract the circulating fake news, which often uh, are going viral uh, uh, on uh, through social, especially through uh, online social media, which are uh, often uh, one of the main uh, sources of information for people about many, many, many things, including uh, the COVID-19 actually. So we need to be uh, active uh, uh, and I think uh, we can do it individually, but it's much better if it, it is, if it is organized. So we have some uh, scientific profiles on social media, which are linked to our uh, organizations and which are shared by, by other uh, institutions and authorities. So, so yes, uh, I believe that uh, uh, there is a, a great uh, potential in social media to communicate science. But firstly, we need to use social media also to counteract fake news that are circulating through social media and they concern COVID-19 and other problems much more important, such as a climate uh, crisis or climate change um, in general. And to answer the other question, how difficult it is to communicate science to uh, school pupils, to grammar school pupils, I actually, from my own experience, believe that it's much easier to communicate science to these uh, young ones than it is to adults, just because the young people, the school pupils, they are often uh, not spoiled by some worldview, political opinion, religious beliefs uh, to which they are so strongly attached as the adults are. So uh, it is much easier for them to engage in uh, something new that science offers to go outside the boundaries of, of the way uh, we tend to think when we are older. So, uh, and it's very uh, pleasurable, um, actually activity to do so 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 yes i think um it is not that hard and challenging and it should be practiced as much as possible because in my opinion young people school populace are just like young scientists they're curious about the world around they want to know the answers the they ask accurate questions and they need people to 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 to, to not only give them the answers but to teach them how to um formulate accurate questions about the world and and the challenges of this modern world we are all living in thank you thank you Piotr. and uh, also uh miss ratso would like to answer please uh, yeah many thanks I'd, I'd actually like to connect uh, the the two questions that i have uh one uh, what was also asking uh, whether you see the evolution on communicating science before COVID-19 and after. And, and also one of the, the ways how to communicate uh, is, is clearly via the social media. And perhaps I can also give an example that uh, what I've seen that uh, really in the commission, all the commissioners have uh, particularly become active in Twitter. Uh, and, and certainly all these, the news uh, also concerning uh, the uh, the uh, our Horizon 2020 program, what he, uh, it has been doing to find solutions to COVID has been very actively communicated. And I think that what has been the positive side is, is clearly that the, the citizens understand that in order to find the solution uh, for the COVID crisis, uh, the, really everybody is asking, when can I expect vaccines? Uh, what are the, the new uh, therapies, the new uh, cures uh, that the scientists uh, have found uh, in order to, to fight against the virus? When uh, will those also be implemented? Uh, because all these questions are very close to the, uh, to the heart of the people. Uh, but at the same time, there are also the, the fake news, uh, which we also need to, to find the, the means uh, to, fight, uh, to fight against. Uh, now, 
um, what we've seen, uh, as I've said, that what we are doing is, is uh, uh, to um, uh, really to, uh, to um, move from one-way communication to two-way communication and really engaging with the citizens that we've been doing now as, as part of the developing uh, the missions for, for the new program. And just to give an, an example of, um, of also engagement with young people, because uh, some of the mission boards have also had uh, specific events with young people. And for instance, one of the missions, uh, the one which is dealing with oceans, uh, actually found the title uh, after the the meeting with the uh, with the um, uh, with the school children with young people, uh, namely starfish, because uh, this was something that they say. Yeah, this is uh, coming to our mind when we speak about the pollution of the of the oceans. Uh, but clearly, uh, where we can also engage them is in citizen science. Just before joining this session, I participated in the in the panel. Uh, of the citizen science conference, uh, which is still going on. It's organized by the German presidency. And one of the ways how to communicate science, but also how to make, uh, um, make citizens and young people part uh, of science and research is uh, via citizen science. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Repso. Uh, anyone else would like to answer the question about the evolution on communication? Uh, yes, please. Um, I just noticed that um, after the COVID, the scientific communication has become as something that the people want to know and want to talk about. But before, it was, I think, it was perceiving like something very far and very difficult to understand. But now, so as all people talk about, uh, I don't know, diet uh, or medicine or economy in a, can we say, low level, now the things start to be the same also for science and research. That I think, I think it was before some um, isolated topic. So that's mean that it's positive because it's more um, priority in the public agenda. But of course, I think it's critical for us now to guide this communication because fake news in science, like for example, COVID can be really, really confusion. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Donata. Uh, Encarna would like to Talk. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, I would like to, to answer very briefly about, about also the difference uh, after COVID-19 uh, about communication. And also, uh, I have to say that this big uh, challenge uh, has uh, forced to everybody try to find the best answer to all the questions that we have to solve in the present and in the future trying not to change so much our lives. So this is, uh, of course, this has changed the, the communication for all of us. Also, our experience in Murti in the Institute is that we have uh, shared all the projects and uh, we have engaged the citizen because they are uh, uh, cooperating with us, with all the, um, the finance and also, and also with uh, different type of help. So this is very, very important. Also, I would like to, to, to say something about the, the danger of the fake news. Maybe we have to, to work on some kind of uh, scientific validation for uh, accounts in social media and uh, maybe this could be helpful for all of us. And the, the last question that I, I would like to address is about uh, the, if uh, uh, the institution has a, a specialized department for communicating science. This is very important. We are uh, speaking about this, but uh, there are a few institution with uh, department dedicated only for that. And also I have emphasized 
the importance of, of our university to make the first plan for disseminated uh, science. I think this is a, a very good practice that has to be followed in other institution because when you uh, um, underlie the importance of communicated science is going to, to you know, actually to, to, to engage people to, to, to the importance of, of science and, and, and the progress for the society. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, Piotr, uh, would like to also answer the question? Yeah, I'd like to talk about how the communication of science is organized at my university. So um, the experience here is that we, uh, we need the uh, organized communication of science. We don't have any department uh, that is related to communication of science, unfortunately, but we are working on it. And that this is not only our problem, it is also because uh, Polish universities are not as much evaluated for how they communicate science, I mean, in local uh, realm, um, but this must change. And uh, so for now, we just have a group of uh, active, ambitious, mostly young people who want to communicate science, but it is mostly the individual initiative because when I was speaking about my engagement with uh, uh, with the Politica uh, weekly magazine or, and other engagements with media outlets, this is just um, emerging directly from my own initiative. It is not that my university wanted me to do this. I just did it because I felt that, uh, well, uh, because as a researcher, I have some extra tasks now. So, 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 but it should be the other way. Uh, and if it would be organized, it would uh, help to engage many, many, many more people and to, uh, to, 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 to actually show them that uh, communication of science is not only important, but as some people already also mentioned it is it can be a pleasure too and can be really satisfying activity great thank you Piotr. and uh, now the last question uh, how many people are communicating science in uh, your institution is it special department or a scientist it's also for uh, all the speakers my mm, reality, just me right now, but we are engaging, of course, um, a lot of researchers who help me <laughs> to select the topics and to communicate it also. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I answer? Okay, in my region, uh, on university level, but also on faculty level, but uh, um, in uh, all area uh, of uh, science popularization uh, project, uh, we have a really good relationship uh, with media, uh, partnership with media, local and uh, national, but also we really uh, uh, use the social media for promotion and uh, uh, we give uh, many useful information to our society. So I think uh, that uh, this uh, uh, um, subject uh, or this, this uh, topic about uh, uh, city uh, initiative is really good because uh, you're in small location like faculty, like uh, some uh, business or so on. So you really uh, uh, have opportunity to uh, show your science researches, uh, science results, goals and everything. So I think it's really important to communicate through social media uh, with communi uh, uh, community uh, in a small region or location, but uh, both on national level. And uh, this time with COVID situation, I think that we have really good and bad experiences uh, uh, how to communicate uh, uh, science. So like my colleague uh, uh, just uh, said and explained, uh, it's really something new, I could say, because sometimes um, scientists are, I'm sorry, but arrogant. And uh, really uh, they uh, have some distance from uh, local people, for, from uh, local businesses, so uh, this kind of uh, uh, communication and uh, partnership pro uh, projects and uh, uh, 
communication through social media is really the best key to improve communication of science. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Anyone else? I would say that we have, uh, let's say, a strong attitude to communication. We have four people that are covering the communication task in the Institute today. Uh, but also the centers have their own uh, um, capacity. So some of the activities of our centers are even more exposed by internal uh, actions. And in general, uh, we are dealing a lot with public uh, uh, media. Uh, I, I couldn't show all the things that are going on, but a uh, couple of, uh, it's about one month ago, we started um, with the national uh, broadcast channel uh, program uh, about, uh, let's say, topics that are of public interest from a scientific perspective. So in a good uh, um, time slot in the, in the day, we are um, talking about science and, uh, and how science can help uh, citizens and can help to understand uh, challenges and problems and find solutions. So that's something that is embedded in, in the way the Institute has <coughs> been. Thank you. And Encarna, you would like to say something? Thank you, yes. I would like to, to, to say that, um, yes, um, every time there are more scientists uh, dedicated to communicate science, but it's, a, it's an additional uh, work. It's an additional uh, <laughs> thing. So it's, it's another effort in, in this uh, world that you have to, to, to find grants to, to, for supporting your uh, research and also many other things. And besides that, uh, uh, this is not taken into account for your curriculum. So this is another problem. If we feel that communicating science is important, it has to be included in the curriculum as a, as a valuable thing. And we have to change this too. And also the other thing is that uh, the, the additional effort, you, you have to adapt your language to be understood. It's not that we are so maybe so arrogant, it's that we need uh, uh, another effort to, to adapt our story to the, to, the, to the citizen, to the public. And this is also uh, a, a, a difficult question. Thank you so much for your answers. You. Uh, would you like to say something more, some notes or anything else? Um, if it's possible, I would like to uh, support uh, what uh, Encarna just mentioned because that is um, one of uh, many obstacles we just realized when we were um, interviewing our researchers over the summer, finding out what is actually their position or their opinion on uh, science communication. It is definitely something we have to do because now we know also why it is um, a societal challenge and a new trend uh, which we ha all have to respond uh, but uh, our question was whether they actually have the capacity to do it the researchers uh, whether they have the capacity to do it by themselves and uh, what could be our role as the research administrators or supporters in uh, facilitating this entire um, activity or discipline because uh, yes it is, as it was said uh, the role of a researcher combines uh, many activities and sub roles which has to be completed to actually um, 
get uh, money for my team. Uh, so that's probably the crucial thing. And then communicating science, although it is perceived as a very important and it is more and more prioritized, um, there are other priorities actually in the life of a researcher. So I think it is very important that it is supported centrally at the first uh, phase. And secondly, that uh, the researchers are actually given um, a hand, a supportive hand, and they know what channels to use, how to actually do it. Um, and that's also why we now want to uh, establish uh, or implement workshops and uh, to show that there are actually many uh, ways how to do it with, um, I don't want to say a minimum effort, but maybe less effort than it was um, expected. Uh, and it's also important to, uh, to emphasize that, um, I don't know, 30 minutes per week or one hour per week dedicated to science communication uh, might not have um, immediate uh, result or output, but in the long-term period, it can really bring uh, much more than 30 minutes extra dedicated to some uh, detailed research work. But this is, of course, very uh, individual and it depends on the on the concrete situation and uh, so on but uh, definitely this is something what our researchers mentioned that they see why it is important but they wish that they will not have to do it in their free time anymore and it will be supported and um, actually um, emphasized as a part of their uh, daily agenda so, for instance, for grants which are um, opened by Masaryk University, we also cover this science communication or scientific outreach as one of the tasks of uh, the researchers. And we also support it on the financial or from the financial point of view. So it has to be really awarded and rewarded. And uh, I believe it will be better because it is important. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Uh, any other notes? Oh, Piotr, well, yes. I, I may just go with a short comment because uh, we are all aware that uh, science communication is mostly practiced by already highly occupied researchers. So maybe uh, some solution uh, on the institutional level is to identify those researchers who are not as much occupied with the research and other tasks and to engage them uh, in science communication because some uh, some less active researchers are are quite doing well in science communication and and then so they are so they can be engaged in these activities but uh, uh, if to do it you need to in, include the science communication in the evaluation of university or institutional uh, activity because uh, from uh, the perspective of Poland, uh, universities are evaluated based on how they teach the students and based on the publications and that's just mostly the total number of impact factor points. But uh, and there's no space for science communication to be evaluated. Uh, so if, if the science communication uh, would be uh, in some uh, regulation and, and would uh, evaluate the uh, institutional activity, it would help to create the system which is uh, rewarding and awarding the those who engage uh, in science communication. And these individuals uh, may not be as active uh, in other university tasks. Thanks. Thank you, Piotr. So now I would like to uh, thank you all, the speakers, uh, our partners, uh, and all the participants, uh, also the organizers from the Committee of Region and uh, European Commission. Thank you so much.
this is the end of our session, but uh, the session was uh, or is still recorded, so you can watch it also after uh, the end. And uh, we also preparing the brochure uh, with uh, the information uh, of uh, our speakers, of the partners, and also the key message of uh, all the sessions. So please follow uh, our social media and the hashtag uh, engage audience and uh, you will find more. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me.